invasive spine surgery or keyhole surgery for that matter? Have you been offered such surgery? Um, is there a better alternative? Is it better than the traditional types of surgery? Well, in this video, we'll just try and explain a little bit more about it, what it all actually means and how it compares to the traditional methods. I'm Anthony Gosch, the lead neurosurgeon at the Spine MDT. Uh, please click the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel and stay up to date with videos that we post regularly that are helpful to patients living with back pain or any form of spine disease. Also click on the links below in the show notes uh, to the blog page where there's lots of articles and other videos on spine care, back pain and different types of spine disease. Also there's a link uh, to the back pain and spine care page on the website where you can click here and get a free guide to managing your back pain. The terms minimally invasive and keyhole often get uh, thrown around in the, in the spine community so I thought I'd just try and break it down a little bit. Traditionally um, operations to the spine were mostly carried out through fairly large big midline incisions as shown in this diagram here where the surgeon dissects right down to the bony midline of the spine. So here this image is a slice say across across the waist if you like and we're looking up uh, from the feet so this is the back this is the front so you'd come right down expose the whole of the, the back of the spine here by moving all these muscles away stripping them off, off the bone which can cause a fair bit of disruption to the muscles and that would give the surgeon access to the back of the spine to do the operation that's required whether it's a decompression operation where you take pressure off the nerves by removing some bone or even removing um, a piece of disc here now with more recent advances in technology and some of the instruments we have and the retracting instruments that can hold the tissues apart and also um, with the use of with the use of microscopes that you know neurosurgeons have historically always used we've been able to make the same operation um, smaller and smaller so now using a very small incision and a special type of retractor that can go down into this space you can work down this narrow channel that's well illuminated with a microscope um, and then carry out the same operation uh, that you could historically. Quite often it's actually the same operation but the wound has become smaller and smaller over the years so an example of that is a micro discectomy which i've discussed in another video where you've got a disc bulge it can now be done for a much smaller uh, incision and window in the back of the spine under the microscope you do the same operation so in that context the wound heals quicker rather than the old-fashioned method of a much bigger incision no microscope uh, and just trying to do it under the naked eye. Where the approach of the operation changes, uh, an example is a lumbar fusion. I've pre previously written a blog about it uh, and done a, um, a video on lumbar fusion where for whatever reason you have to join two segments of the spine together where there's instability. Again, traditionally um, this was done through a midline incision down here to expose all of the back of the spine and then a screw would be placed either side under direct vision and with the help of x-rays um, and then the disc is removed just shown here on this diagram the disc is removed and a cage a little breeze block is put in its place to allow that to fuse well nowadays with the change in technology of the screws themselves the screws can be put into the uh, into the spine through little stab incisions in the skin very very small incisions and with the technology we have image guidance or with x-ray guidance we can direct it accurately into the bit of the bone it needs to go into without actually exposing that uh, completely and then for the insertion of the actual cage bit that bit can be done under the microscope for a very very tiny incision so you often end up with instead of a big midline incision um, the way I do it is usually just two stab incisions as opposed to four in this case or or that great big compared to that great big uh, midline incision that's far less disruptions to the muscles because you're not stripping the muscle off of the bone and you do get a much quicker recovery and underneath all of that it's the same operation uh, with the same end result another example is with fractures of the spine provided you don't have to do um, a big decompression and you just simply want to stabilize a fracture of the spine in some cases you need quite a long segment um, 
that used to be done and quite still often is done for a great big midline incision where again you expose the whole of the spine this is looking at someone straight ahead so that's the right that's the left um, now you can make small little puncture incisions of the skin just where the heads of these screws are drive the screws into accurately into the right part of the bones um, with image guidance or x-ray guidance and then connect the heads of those screws with a rod that, that just slides in some of the technology the instruments we have allow that through very small incisions secures the fracture allows a patient to get up straight away with very minimal disruption uh, to the muscle now you may have heard of endoscopic spine surgery specifically endoscopic discectomy or microdiscectomy when well, i did some training on that with frank uh, hassel in germany um, a couple of years ago and very recently completed some training with Stefan Hellinger, quite a well-known uh, spine surgeon from Munich. Now, this offers a slightly different approach where normally a microdiscectomy for a small incision in the midline of the back, where you enter the spine through this approach here, through the arch of the back of the spine to get to this bit of disc here that's pinching the nerve. The endoscopic approach allows you to do it for a very tiny stab incision rather than a, a small wound, uh, where you come in usually from the side, usually from your, your side, through this open channel here, through this opening in the side of the spine called the foramen where the nerve leaves through um, and, the, and attack the disc here. So it is slightly less invasive than the traditional micro discectomy. So my view is as a surgeon, you shouldn't offer a procedure to a patient just because you can, just because you shouldn't offer a minimally invasive procedure just because it's something you can do. It has to be right for that patient. So for example, the endoscopic discectomy, um, it has its place, uh, but my take on it is it's a slightly less invasive procedure than the standard microdiscectomy, which is itself um, minimally uh, invasive. However, there are some scenarios where, for example, if you have a very soft and loose disc, uh, disc fragment that's quite lateral, quite poking out to the side, it can be easy to access that way and can offer you a quicker discharge from hospital. It can be done under um, sedation as opposed to a full general anaesthetic. So it has some um, advantages, particularly if you're a high risk patient for a general anaesthetic. Um, but again, you've got to be very careful with this and, so, and as a surgeon you try and select patients that are more suitable for that rather than the traditional me method and that's why I think um, it's important that your surgeon can do a range of procedures so that they offer you the procedure that you will benefit from the most and that will give you the longest lasting result. Words that overlap and get confused sometimes are operation, intervention, uh, procedure procedure basically encompass and, and, and intervention encompasses any any kind of invasion of your body of some sort whether it's a needle going through your skin to an open a big open operation and sometimes it gets confusing um, there are procedures um, that um, are carried out by people who are not um, surgeons so for example pain specialists who I work with who do very good work would carry out more needle based um, interventions or procedures um, but sometimes they're not necessarily the best thing for you and that's why it's important to have a multidisciplinary approach which is what MDT stands for in the context of Spine MDT um, our brand um, so it's, it's important you, you understand this when you're seeking treatment one such procedure that gets marketed a lot is a laser microdiscectomy. That, so that's a procedure that can be carried out by non-surgeons. That's when a needle is passed through the skin into the disc space under X-ray guidance. And using a laser, the theory is you burn a vacuum, you burn a hole which creates a vacuum and it sucks the disc back. Sometimes it works, often it doesn't. And that's because it's quite difficult to judge how soft the disc is on an MRI. You can get an idea, but getting it right is often you know it's not that easy um and the success rate of that isn't in my opinion as, as strong as it is with say a, a very minimally invasive operation called a microdiscectomy and surgeons can do laser discectomies as well um i don't think it's definitive there's no point doing a procedure where you might have to keep repeating it and end up doing something more definitive so it's always my belief that trying to do something definitive provided it's not that invasive um, compared to the alternatives. So in summary, there are a range of operations and procedures uh, today 
that can be done through very small incisions and minimal tissue disruption. Uh, the important thing is what that can achieve compared to the traditional methods. Um, there's no point having um, procedures that don't give you a definitive uh, result on the grounds that they are just simply minimally invasive. Um, or there's no point having a procedure because that's all that certain clinician or practitioner um, can offer you. It's important to explore the wide range of procedures and that's why it's important to work in a multidisciplinary um, team. Our goal is to find the least invasive solution but that also has to give you um, the longest lasting result. A lot of these procedures actually are the equivalent of the traditional big open operations like beneath the skin is the same thing that's being done and in that scenario it's, it's absolutely fine and better if you can do it through smaller incisions provided it can be done safely some procedures as i mentioned get sold as minimally invasive surgery that are not the same operation at all and in fact probably don't achieve the same results such as a laser microdiscectomy um, or some of the injections or radio frequency things that get offered. They have their place, and it's important to understand that, uh, but they're not necessarily the best um, solution. So our goal at the Spine MDT is to find the least invasive solution that gives you the longest lasting uh, result. Uh, please feel free to look at our website um, and call us or email us, and we'll be very happy to help you and answer any of your questions. Thank you.